This is Tara McGinnis, and this is Theatrical Makeup Design Interactive. Uh, for this exercise, we're going to go and do yourself aged. We do two age makeup lessons in this course, and one of them is yourself aged, and the other is an aged character. Most often, for a stage, what you will be doing is doing an aged character. However, understanding how your own face is going to age is going to make it easier for you to figure out how to do the various characters that you will want to go and paint onto your face. So, uh, as before with trying to do yourself only more so, you want to go and look at the bones in your face and realize that as you age, the bones and cartilage in your face become more prominent. Uh, part of the reason for this has to do with the fact that your skin stretches and pulls in odd spots. So that things like, here's my nose. Here's my nose with parts stretched over it. You can see that there are things that become obviously more prominent just by stretching it in an odd way. Other things. You want to go and flex your face and make faces because these show you where when your face moves wrinkles are going to occur. While this looks very silly it's perfectly good for you to do as an actor for practice anyway and it shows you where all those future lines are going to be. One of the things that you're going to need to do when you do an old age character is to make sure that the lines that you're putting in for your old age character do not contradict the lines as they're going to be too much. You can pick and choose which of them you're going to emphasize, but you should never, for instance, paint lines on your forehead that are suitable for what I call a Klingon forehead, where you have the bones are going vertically, and so the wrinkles go vertically. You don't want to paint a bunch of vertical wrinkles over a forehead that the moment you move it is going to go and have contradictory lines appearing on it when you express yourself. You're going to try and make lines that parts of them intersect with and connect with the actual parts of your face and the way they move. The result is you'll then get an exaggeration of your expressions, which is useful as an actor to read to a large house. But the other thing you'll get is you'll go and be able to go and move the makeup around instead of just saying perfectly still and, hi there, I have an age makeup, but I can't move my face. Uh, it also gives you a starting point from which you can guess what things your face can be made to do and what things you really can't change about them. So uh, that's why we do the exercise of yourself aged, even though most of the time you're not going to do exactly that as a makeup. You will almost always pitch it one way or the other as a character. However, knowing what your face does and what it's likely to do as you get older by yourself is, is really a very useful thing. So as usual, I'm going to go and start by putting on a uh, base. Sometimes for old age, you want to use um, a base that's either a bit grayer, if you're trying to look a bit unhealthy and weather beaten. Uh, in fact, uh, if you happen to be light skinned white, there is a color in most versions of uh, makeup companies that's called old age that basically is very good for doing weather beaten old men that look kind of unhealthy. It is a very nice tone for doing that. Uh, if, however, you're trying to do somebody sort of pale and unwell, you may want it for once uh, go and do one that is uh, lighter than your natural color. I, however, am going to do myself aged, and I'm betting that the first thing I'm going to do when I retire is move to a warmer climate. Ergo, I will be getting more sun in my face, even though I will dutifully put on sunblock. 
So I'm going to go and keep going with my slightly darker color. And at this point, while you're putting on your base, think about not only the bones in your face, but your future life as you see it. Because other things that make a difference on an age makeup are cigarettes. Cigarettes, for instance, if you smoke a great deal, uh, the nicotine does something to your skin that thins it, which means more wrinkles. And it thins it unevenly. So the result is that people who smoke for a very long time not only have lots of wrinkles, but the wrinkles look kind of like safety glass that's been broken. It's not neat little lines. It's like praised glass. It goes in lots of little directions. Um, so you have this, this broken glass kind of look to a face that is of a heavy smoker. Other things. Uh, if you're female, you're going to have smaller wrinkles, lots of little ones. Uh, if you're male, you're most probably going to have bigger wrinkles because while everybody has seven layers to their skin, um, the layers of skin are thinner or thicker with the two genders and uh, different uh, ethnic groups. So some people will have big, strong pleats to their face, and others will have lots and lots of little lines. Now, I know I will have lots and lots of little lines. I can already see them coming in, uh, because my mother has lots and lots of little lines. Um, and I have tended to have my face develop much as her did, hers did. Uh, if, however, you know your ancestors are male or female, ones that get the large pleat things um, instead of the little tiny ruffly things, uh, you're going to go and want to go and put in less tiny lines and more big ones, just so that you get to know your face better. Other things, alcohol, uh, different kinds of weather, you can go and see that if you spend a lot of time in the sun, you will get more of what they call age spots, which are joys of uh, too much sun damage. Uh, if you spend a lot of time in a very cold climate, you will also have a tendency to get little red spots um, that are from uh, broken blood vessels in cold weather. This is likely to be exaggerated if you drink a lot, because alcohol tends to make that more so, uh, and if you happen to have a genetic predisposition, like me, where half your ancestors come from Ireland. I'm getting lots of little pink spots happening on my face as I'm getting older, and I will probably have a lot more. Uh, my face is slowly turning from a sallow complexion from the German heritage to as I get older, I get more and more red in it and start looking more Irish. So, um, the, the different things to do with your family background, the substances you ingest and, or inhale, all will go and make a slight difference to different parts of your face. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is again feel the bones in my face. You're getting tired of feeling the bones in your face, but you still need to do it. However, as you get older, the bones in your face are going to become a little bit more pronounced. So this same divot that I did for myself only more so, the side here, I'm going to put in, but I'm not going to make it as subtle as I did last time. I'm actually letting it be fairly dark. A little divot in there that you were told when you were a child, if you get hit with a rock there, or get hit with a golf ball, you're going to die. True, actually. Um, in here, I've got a straight across. I've got a little bit going down here and a straight across there. So, shadow in the center. I'm going to indents and highlighter across here. Up here, it actually is stronger there and there. Not quite a straight line. And then I've got very strong here. And under the brow ridge. 
Now, so far, this is the same as I was doing when I was doing my self only more so. However, as we're going to do age, I also want to go and put in some of these. Now, you scrunch up your forehead like that to figure out what wrinkles are going this way. And then you take either your shadow or your highlighter and you pick a couple of those that seem fairly pronounced and you run just a little bit of a line across that. Now, something that people ask, when I scrunch up my forehead, I don't get lines like that. Should I paint them in anyway? Not today. Today you're just trying to figure out what you're going to do as you age. So. If you scrunch up your forehead and there aren't any little lines there, you don't have to paint them in. Next time, when you're doing an old age character, you who have no forehead wrinkles, you can decide what direction forehead wrinkles are if you put them in. You can make them anything you want. You can move them anywhere you want because whatever you put on your forehead when you scrunch up your eyes like this, it's not going to contradict what you painted on. So, for today, if you have no forehead wrinkles when you scrunch up your eyes, don't put anything in. But, but, uh, be aware of the fact that that doesn't mean you never put them in. You put them in as per character based on what you want to do. Conversely, if like me, you have spots that look like they're going to be forehead wrinkles. Here. Here. I'm going to put a few of those in. I'm not going to put in every tiny bit that's in there. When I'm doing an old age character, I can decide how much of this I want to use in it. And I can mess about with it a little bit as long as I don't do something that crosses a Cross it. Okay? But I need to know where these are so that I don't do something that contradicts it too extremely or it will look fake. So I want to know where these things are. Now I've just done the lines. This is just done to show you where it is. This is not the way your lines should look. Having your lines look like this is what we call liney. Their makeup looks liney, which looks like somebody went and did a little things going across. This is something that's very typical when you've got like kids doing makeup or high school kids who, you know, they, they, they can scrunch up their forehead into their hairline and they're not going to get anything that's going to show them where to put it. So they just do a couple lines straight across, usually with an eyebrow pencil. So it looks amazingly fake. Uh, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is a banana shaped shadow and Assuming that this line is where there's an indent, what you want to do is take that little line and blend it up above that. The result that you have a hard edge and a soft edge of each of these lines. And the hard edge It's extra dark is at the bottom and the soft edge that's being blended is at the top. And it's banana-like because all of that is blending out into points at either end, getting fainter and fainter as they go out to the edge. Do the same thing with each of these other lines. Blend them up. Pull them out to the edges in a banana shape. If you blend so much, 
that you don't really have a hard edge left, you can then go back in and reline the hard edge. Now this is coming out much darker than I want it. So I'm going to take some off of the brush and blend it out again. Same thing, these here, these here. I'm trying to make it a little bit more banana shaped. More crescent moon shaped. Now that's the shadow. However, any place that you put a wrinkle in shadow form, you also want to go and put in a highlight. In fact, if you're just going to do one, you're doing a makeup in a hurry and having to do a change and so on. If you're just going to do one, for age, you actually want to go and do just the highlight because the highlight will tend to pale the face, which tends to age the face and so on. Also, there's something in your brain where doing all the brown lines, it makes sense to do them. I mean, when you're trying to figure out where to put them and so on, your head has an easier time figuring out how to do the dark lines than how to do the highlights. But when you see it on stage, the highlights read more dimensionality than the shadows do. The shadows end up just looking like lines when they're all alone by themselves. So, now in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to take your highlight and you're going to put the hard edge of the highlight against the hard edge of the shadow. So that strongest white is against the strongest of the browns. And then you're blending that down below it. Give it some dimensionality. Same thing here. Those also need to have this sort of banana shape thing where they don't have a hard thing. They go and blend out subtly. Oh. Thus forehead wrinkles. Now, as you can see here, there's also a little line of shine that occurs under the lights that is the edges from these little side shadows in here. So I'm going to go and put a little highlighter across that as well, which will tend to make the ends of these blend even more. It gives it that little vertical thing. It happens when the skull bones become more prominent. Now here, I spend a lot of time doing this, however, with my forehead because I have headaches, lots of headaches. So when I do this, I'm starting to get not only a couple of lines here, but as you can see, it sort of builds up the muscle right here so that I have extra stuff above that part of brow ridge. So, if I want to look like I've spent an entire life having migraines, which I sure have, I'm going to go and make sure those spots where the extra muscle is built up from a combination of worrying and migraines, and students not turning in their papers on time, I'm going to put extra highlighter there. I'm also going to put couple of shadows here in the wrinkles. Now here, it's not as clear where the highlight should be because they're, they're mostly going up, but there's a little bit of an angle at which point that means the center portion of it is 
the underneath. So that's where I put my highlights for that. The other thing that happens there is this section gets a little divot. So I'm going to put a little bit of shadow in there. So, indent. Now, another thing that happens with my eyes as I do this is here where I have that extra brow ridge of bone, the skin stretches across it and forms also this little sort of pocket thing in here. A sort of worry pocket. And if I go and make funny faces like this into there, I can then go and put shadow in that spot. And the shadow ends up suggestive of this kind of wrinkle that I'm getting more of as I get older from lots of time of having migraines and people who don't turn out papers on time. Now, one side of that came out a little bit darker than the other, so I'm going to lighten that up. Now, in this case, because the part that's sticking out is over here, this is actually going to end up having a highlight above it. Because it's forming into a fold like that. So essentially, what your mother told you when you were a kid, of, if you keep making that face, it's going to stick that way is true. If you keep doing this with your face, as I get older, this is something that my face is going to do. So the sooner I get a cure for migraines, the less likely this is going to happen to me. Uh, other things. You may have heard a lovely myth that says that as you get older, your cartilage continues to grow. So that even though your the rest of you stops growing at a certain point, uh, your cartilage will get bigger. So when you get old, you get big ears and big nose. Well, it's true that many of you, when you get older, will seem to have bigger nose and bigger ears. And indeed, they will, will be bigger in relationship to the rest of your face. The reason for that is not that the cartilage keeps growing. The cartilage stays just fine the way it is. It does not need to keep growing as you get older. It just sits there, does its thing. What your cartilage does, however, is it doesn't shrink. And quite a lot of people have the problem as they get older that their bones and their flesh around it do shrink. They lose weight as they get very old. Uh, they also lose bone mass. This is especially true if you are a Northern European white woman or descended from Northern European white women. Guess what? I'm descended from Northern European white women. So I have to go and do something that makes my nose appear more prominent. Not because my nose will keep growing in my face, but because as I get older, more of the flesh of my face will pull and do like so. And because the bones in my face will actually get smaller, this condition is known as osteoporosis, and just the flesh, I will almost certainly um, lose weight since um, women tend to lose, gain weight from puberty until menopause, and then from menopause until death, they tend to lose it. The result is that if I live long enough, I'll get to be very skinny. 
And if you live as long as my grandmother, who was the same height as me growing up, five feet, six inches tall, by the time she died at 96, she weighed perhaps 90 pounds and was 5'3". And I remember as she lay dying that I realized that she was probably going to die that day or the next because I looked at her nose and I thought of the quotation that Mistress Quickly has, that Mistress Quickly says of Falstaff as he lay dying, that his nose was as sharp as any pen. And as you get to be very old, that skin does this and pulls, and there's something about that cartilage that it becomes more prominent, and it is especially pronounced just as somebody is going to die. And so I saw her nose was as sharp as any pen because everything was shrinking around it. It was pulling away around it. She was not wanting to eat and so on. And there she was, and I'm going, her nose is as sharp as any pen. My grandmother is dying. So if I'm going to be doing an old lady, I'm going to go and sharpen my nose. So, the bone that's here, go and do. This is similar to what I did with myself, only more so. Only I'm going to do it far more extreme. And I'm going to pull that shadow. Go and really show that indent. Show the pulling that happens around there. And I take the highlighter, make that show up. But it's less the highlighter on the side here and more on that tip. I want to go and get tip. So just a little bit brighter than usual. And shadow underneath, which I didn't do in corrective because I want it to go. So it's looking just a bit sharper. A little bit better there and there. So I can put in pencil sharpener. Now, under the eyes, usually the bags under your eyes are going to form somewhere right along the line of where your the bottom of your eye sockets are. So if you're a very young person, you may not actually have this showing up at all, even when you scrunch up your eyes. But usually if you scrunch like this, you'll see where the, that bag is going to be. As you can see on me, it's a sort of little double bag because there's a spot that's in line with the bone, and then there's a spot that goes a little bit lower than the bone. So it's a double thing on me. Um, but if you're a very young person and you're not sure where to put it when you're trying to, hi there, I'm in high school and I don't have any of this stuff on my face yet, and I'm trying to go and make it so that uh, you can go and paint a bag under your eyes, you're going to use that line that you feel with the bones in your face under there, because most probably that's where it's going to be on yourself. However, above all, if, if Ignore the bone if when you scrunch up your eyes, there's some spot down here that's actually showing up to be. Because if you paint on a bag in one spot, and then when you scrunch up your eyes, the real indent is another spot, it's going to look very false. So that's why you have to go and make lots of silly expressions while doing this. This time I'm going to try putting on the highlighter first, so you can see what that looks like. In this case, I'm doing the highlighter beneath. Like so, hard edge toward the top, soft edge toward the bottom. Uh, on eye bags, you also have to go and do the top part of the eye bag because it scrunches up and forms into a little pop. 
pocket there, and so the top part of it also gets a highlight. One of the delightful things about working with stage makeup, and particularly teaching stage makeup, I've discovered over the years, is that you get to really love things like your eye bags. You wake up in the morning, you stayed up too late. You look at yourself in the morning and you've got these great purple circles under your eyes. And you take one look at yourself, and instead of going, oh God, no, 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 I can't let myself out. Now, you look and you go, oh, cool. <laughs> Isn't that an interesting color? Oh, I could use a little purple in with eye, whatever. Uh, shadow next time. So, it's kind of cheering because you can enjoy acquiring the signs of age because it makes doing this sort of makeup easier and you get better and better at it. And you learn more and more about your face. It can be rather fun. That's one of those mentally healthy things. Okay, now, as you can see, I've got the bags painted in. They're fairly extreme at this point, and they look odd. And the reason they look odd is you almost never have bags this pronounced without also having little crow's feet. Now, as you can see from scrunching up, I'm going to have a multitude of little tiny crow's feet. On stage, however, you never want to paint in that many. If you paint in every one of these little doodads here, it's going to look like a spider died on your face. Well, a pair of spiders died on your face. It just, it's too much for the eye to go and see. So you have to pare it down to a simplified version of it. However, paring it down to, say, three or at most four little lines um, gives you a certain amount of choice. So, for instance where I'm going to pare it down to, say, three or four lines. I'm going to have some that are this up line, one that goes and is the straight across line, and one that's the going down line, as representative of all these here. Next time, when I'm doing character, I can choose if I want to use the up lines, or the straight across lines, or the down lines, or a combination of some of those, to go and decide which way I want to pitch the character because I know from where these are which ones are going to go and where, where I have ones that are going to move. So, this time I'm just going to go and do one of each. Now, I just did that in shadow. As you can see, you have to go and do a very pointed edge on the outside. I'm doing fairly large ones. Usually you don't need to do them quite that large, but if you're doing it on a large stage, you will want to. Under each of those lines, you're going to want to put a highlight. Please note that most of the time, when you've got crow's feet, they intersect with these bags. And so the, if you've got lines that are here, you want to actually run the highlight through the shadow of the bag. That makes it look a little bit more realistic. So, little pointed bits there. Now, when I do a character, if I want to make the person look sad, I just use the down ones. If I want to make them look terribly cheery, I use mostly the up ones. <sighs> now, cheekbones. In general, you tend to have your face sink in a bit as you get older, unless you get rather fat. 
as you get older. Or if, like me, you're somewhere in the middle, what you do is you tend to have the area around your cheekbones sinks in, and the fat on your face moves south, becomes jowls. So you have sections here that are getting thinner, and they're counterbalanced by sections down here where all the fat in your face has just sort of gone down and is forming into little jowls down here. So I'm going to put in a highlight and shadow for the cheekbones. Make those more obvious. And if I wanted to make it look very sharp, like if I was and if doing a character makeup and trying to make the person very thin in the face, I'd go and make this part even more extreme. But since I'm trying to just do me, which will most probably be thin in the upper part of my face and round in the lower part of my face, I'm just going to do this much. So, showing that little extra thinness through here. Now, the other thing is I have the kind of apple-cheeked granny thing. This goes very rounded. Now, part of that I will emphasize by going and painting in this part. This is your nasolabial fold. That's your nose-mouth fold. And even if you're a small child, if you make this expression, you will be able to find it. So, you make that expression, and you take your shadow color, and one, two, three. Do a thin line in this ridiculous expression. Following along where it goes. Okay, very messy line doing that, but you're doing it to figure out where it should go. And it's very, very important that you never try to paint a nasolabial fold in a place other than <laughs> where yours really is. Because even in a child's makeup, when you're doing smiling in character or frowning in character, there's enough of it showing that if you smile or whatever, it's going to contradict what you're painting on there. So you now take the edges of your nose, use that to make the edges show up a little better there. And here, I'll take this and blend it. I'm going to take off some of the stuff where it got to be too thick. What I'm doing is I'm taking the brush, picking up bits of the paint, and then brushing the brush onto a sponge so that it gets to be less. So I'm mopping it up. There we go. So hard edge on the inside, soft edge on the outside. Same thing here. Blending hard edge and soft edge. And the reason it needs to be where it is, is the second you do this, if it is even a quarter of an inch off to one side, it looks completely fake, even if you're doing it on a kid. Um, because everybody, when they smile, that shows up. Now, to make that even more effective, we put in the highlighter. In this case, I'm going to do a hard edge against a hard edge. Highlighter through here. And then blending it into a soft edge for the middle of your mouth. And anytime you have this, you also have a portion of your face that's sticking out here. And so you're going to do a soft edged highlight just above it. Sort of like this soft edge highlight that goes on the upper part of the bag of your eye. 
because it's another thing that sticks out. Now, on a very thin face, you actually make this into a sort of skeletal triangle thing because it brings that up. However, as I say, I have these little round things. So what I'm going to do is make sure I get my highlighter up here. And you can put shadow down here to make the bottom part of that apple cheek thing. But another thing that's very useful at this point is to put in a little bit of red in that spot. Because again, it's suggestive of apple cheek granny. And it does the work of the shadow a little bit more subtly. Almost nailing my highlighter on this side. Right there. But that gives it more of that round thing that's happening in this part of my face. Now, down here with the land of the jowls. You can tell where your jowls will be two ways. Generally speaking, jowls most of the time have a lump, a sort of dangling lump that is the true jowl, your chin and dangling lump, and your jawline. Now, you can feel where those are going to be by feeling the underside of your jawline, and where there's a divot, that's where one of the indents is on either side. The other indent you do by grabbing the flesh of your chin and leaning forward and trying to give yourself a double chin. This is somewhat uncomfortable and certainly difficult to talk through, but I'm going to go and do it long enough to go and run a thin, simple line along that. And that goes approximately where that line is going to be. So, one there, there. Then I feel for the divot in the jaw. And that's the other little indent. So, I'm going to take my shadow and put it in the triangle of that under chin thing. Even if you have a very thin face, you may end up having this line show up that you associate with double chins. The difference is that if you have a very thin face, you don't get so much jowls, you don't get the, the dangling bits, but you do still get the divot in here that tucks in and under because that becomes more visible as the flesh on your chin uh, becomes looser. And if you're very thin-faced, that where I was saying that you have a section here that goes and becomes triangular and skeletal, what happens is if you have a thin face, instead of getting a double chin like this, those lines connect to that point here. So you have sort of like a little line that runs up and down into a triangular shape. It goes from the as a label will fold down into that section and then back up again. So uh, I, on the other hand, have a little bit more fleshiness going, so I painted in the indents. I'm now going to go and highlight the rounded parts. Now, the main rounded part is where this little section of fat is in between the jowls. Someone who becomes very, very stout when they get older, and they've got chins, you know, multiple chins happening, they may get more than one divot, simply because there are extra folds that cre are created. But that's a fairly unusual uh, situation. Most people just get a little bit of one. Then the edge of your jaw is the next little protrusion. You can feel where that is. And then the underside of your chin 
a highlight that shows up on either side. Yes. Even if you have a fairly thin face like I do, you may want to go and connect that up a little higher because it does tend to give your face a more aged look. Okay. Another easy way to add age is to take these sections here and put highlighter on them and then use a little bit of shadow to make them appear more prominent. That gives your mouth a sort of pinched in look like so. Uh, same thing here, chin. Your chin does not actually usually do too much. It's, it's getting older. Uh, it just sort of sits there. But the indent under your lips may become more pronounced. So if you do something that's like a little uh, frown there, and then something that's kind of like a little smile up here. It tends to go and make that look, again, more pinched in. Now, for lips. As you get older, your natural tendency is to pull your mouth in more. Uh, this seems to be true no matter what your ethnic group is. So almost all uh, older mouths look smaller than their, the same mouths looked when they were 20. So most of the time what you're going to do with your lips is you're going to go and want to make them a hair smaller. And what I do is on this one, I start with the outline first. And what I do is I put the outline that would normally go outside the edge of the lips, just a hair on the inside as a guide. Smaller mouth. Now, color on your lips can vary wildly. Some people lose color in their face as they get older. Uh, others gain it. Uh, another thing, as my grandmother lay dying, is she looked like she had the most perfect red lipstick on. Uh, kind of an amazing thing. But um, I don't think I'm going to lose color in my lips as I get older. If anything, I'm gaining it as I get older. As the skin gets thinner. So, I'm actually going to put on a fairly usual bright color, such as I would use for corrective makeup. Uh, and give it a fairly strong tint. Now, the other thing that your mouth does as it ages is by pulling in all the time, you start to get wrinkles that run up and through it. Uh, you can see this on my mouth pretty clearly because I live in Fairbanks, Alaska, and in Fairbanks it's perfectly normal to have these kind of vertical lines in the mouths of 20-year-olds <laughs> because it's extremely dry up here. We live almost entirely through the winter on lip balm, and even in the summer people use lip balm because they've been having to use it all the rest of the year. So uh, you get very dry lips with these vertical wrinkles very early. Um, however, e even in climates where this isn't the case, uh, at, when you get to extreme age, you get the vertical wrinkles when you've been pulling things in. So uh, what I usually recommend is if you can get away with this one just using the highlighter, it will usually work out better. Uh, sometimes, though, if you want to make it very extreme for character, 
where you kind of want the mouth to suggest a spider has died in someone's face, uh, then you do use the highlight and the shadow together. But mostly for a normal age makeup, you would want to go and just use the highlighter. And what you do is you run little lines through the line of the lip. making sure they go outside the line of the lip as well. And it gives that slightly pinched look to a mouth. By doing it with just the highlighter, you, you avoid the spider dyed in the face, the really dark darkening of it that you get. Uh, so it's good for doing very old lips, but not having them look too strange or sinister, um, simply by putting that in. Now, other things. Uh, different points in your life, you have different amounts of unevenness in your skin tone. Babies tend to have an extremely even skin tone. Teenagers, of course, get zits. Uh, Twenty-somethings tend to have a fairly even skin tone. Uh, but as you get older, you start to get spots in your face. You get age spots, uh, you get um, little red broken blood vessels and things, various things that go and uh, break up the color of the skin. And this is true if you've got anything between a median brown skin to a light skin, you will have different slight discolorations. And this weird thing that is in most of your makeup kits that you've been wondering what to do with and what it's for. This is what it's for. You take little bits of red. If you are pale skinned and you're going to get little dollops of red in spots and you can put them in across the places you're likely to get red spots which tend to be across the nose and cheeks. You can also do the same thing with brown to give that sort of age spot look. And that usually good to put in to shadow areas. But if you're female, you don't usually want to get it too far down because if you use too much of it in chin area, it looks like you have five o'clock shadow, which I suppose you could have as you were getting older, but uh, not usually. You can also use this in general to break up one of these makeups that you've gone and put all these extra lines in and say you want to go and suggest age but you don't have that large of a theater that you need to do it to such an extreme you can go and do a fairly extreme makeup and then knock it down a little bit with this extra unevenness and it makes it a little bit more believable but putting back in the unevenness that, you know, see that's too much, here. the unevenness that comes with age skin tone, but you have artistic control over it, which you didn't have if you're just dealing with the own, your own unevenness. So you can see I can put extra through here, a little bit through here, but then leave the things that I especially need to give that impression of age and not break those up at all. So. Uh, another thing you could do that is good for age that I might, I would say my very end of life, like uh, my grandmother also had uh, an inclination for this area of her eye to go a bit red. Again, this is something that usually shows up a lot earlier than that. Uh, if you've got northern European 
heritage and you drink too much because this little area gets very engorged and pink from some sort of alcoholic whatever. So usually when you're doing an old drunk, you put lots and lots of red around the eyes and extra red around the nose. Uh, my grandmother was not a drunk, so I just didn't get it until the very end and just a little bit of it. So, this is myself, only more so, only aged. So, myself looking aged. Now, on some occasions, you will have a costume that, like this, will be below. Now, most of the time, if somebody my age, like 46, is going to be playing somebody who's, say, 86, which is what I'm doing for this makeup, you won't have this showing, because there's a limitation to what makeup will do for being a convincing old age neck. A costumer will usually have the good sense to find ways of covering this up and covering up the hands covering up the neck. However, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can't to go and make that extreme age. That's one of the reasons if you're a costume designer and you have a young person playing an old character, why those little lace half gloves are so useful. You put them on, they suggest an old lady or an old guy who's cut the fingers out of his gloves and it doesn't involve getting lots of makeup that will get on the costumes. Same thing with the neck. There are two main areas on the neck that you want to go and highlight and shadow. Those tendons I've been showing you. And the lateral wrinkles that show up when you do this. Uh, some of you will get some, and some of you will get others, and some of you will get both. But uh, what you want to do is for the tendons, you want to go and figure out where they're going to be and put shadow in between, particularly in the hollow of your throat. You don't want to put anywhere near as much makeup on your neck as you do on oh your as you do with other parts of your makeup, because your neck doesn't tend to repel makeup, so it's much harder to get off. It will get off, however, all over your costume, no matter what you do. So, less of that is definitely more. I'm just putting in tiny amounts to suggest those tendons in their vertical. And little bones the neck. Notice I'm doing most of it in the front. First of all, if you have to do the back, somebody else has to do it on you. You can't just magically figure out how. Uh, the second is almost all your costumes are going to cover that. Um, so, uh, same thing with these wrinkles, just like you did here. You want to go and take line, if you go across, line, if you go across, you want to blend up. Across. Keeping it fairly simple and not too strong. You need just enough on your neck to suggest age. You can do an elaborate one that will show every bit, but for practical purposes on stage, you really don't want it most of the time. I remember when I was young and first on makeup crew and making somebody up and doing all this for just like all sorts of time. We had lots of fun with it, but it really was something that was more for our own amusement than for the effect that it had. Hold on. Okay, there we go. So, parts that stick up. 
So that's enough so that it would, in the color of an outfit, suggest that this went with this. You would also want to, with this, break it up with a stipple sponge. So that you get that little bit uneven. Again, don't do too much. <coughs> or again, it will look like 5 o'clock shadow. And your hands. Your hands are even easier. Hands are really where simple where you go and put whatever color makeup <coughs> you have on your face. Also goes on your hands. However, you only have to worry about the top part of your hands. The underside doesn't really get anything too obvious happening to it. So, and the fact that if your palms stay paler looks perfectly normal. However, you are then going to take and put shadow in between each knuckle like this. Dot there, and a dot there. Dot there, and a dot there. You can do this all the way along. And you blend those. So it's a little less pronounced. Thing on your thumb, here and here, there, there, and here, and a little shadow in here. And run shadows through here and make them wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. there. And then you take your highlighter and you do the opposite. You could have an extra dot on each nipple. bit of a divot on the edge here. You have a very skeletal looking hand that matches as compared to this, which emphatically does not. Pretty fast, fairly easy. Comparing those two. 